All right, I'm alive. Yes, I am live. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Um, a simple one today. I'm going to teach you some uh, easy, basic Fusion 360 lessons. Uh, I'm only going to model uh, Anna's grenade, the two grenades she has here on her uh, belt. It's a really simple design, and I'm going to show you some uh, basic modeling, basic shapes, and uh, just follow me along and... Uh, Fusion is free for hobbyists, so there's no reason to not download it and try it. So uh, if you have already downloaded, join me into guiding you through some basic designs. So what I did is some prep work already in this uh, Fusion scene. Uh, I took Anna's Grenade from Overwatch. Uh, if you don't know how to extract the game models, I have a tutorial for that right here above, if you're watching this on YouTube. And um, there are images on the internet also for this, so you can just get those and you can attach them uh, to one of the axes in, uh, in Fusion. And how you do this is you go here to Insert and then Attach Canvas, and then you can select one of these panels and if you click on this one you can then you've selected it of course and then select image over here and then you can select the image and if you hit OK it will stick it to that axis and it will lock in place you can upscale it you can downscale it and all that to match the size you want of course you can model it really really tiny and then upscale the whole thing later but I already did this I already attached the side view and the top few here so that would save me some time and let's uh let's get right into it now we can see that uh let me all right um we can see here because it's quite transparent uh there's a ball in there with two basic shapes uh, on here so for this design it's rather quite easy because the plastic ball in this case i will just buy at a hobby store i will uh, spray it with some um with that tinted glass uh, kind of spray thing. But I am going to model it here because I need to cut the shape in in this top and this bottom. And the top and the bottom, they kind of look alike. I, I believe they are the same. So we only have to uh, model one side and then mirror it, flip it over. And then we have both of them Then make a ball inside of it, cut away where the round shape should be inside. And that will be done with a Boolean cut. And there we have it. So this shape is round as we can see from the top view here so what i'm going to do is make a circle and i'm going to make the circle for this go back to fusion and we'll select this plane and then down here or up here we have sketch and want to make a circle so we go to circle and then a center diameter circle or the shortcut C. So you can click on it, or if you have this plane selected, you can just hit C, and then you can see we can start placing some stuff. So I want that circle to originate from the center, like that. So it's selected the plane, right here, dead in the middle. I clicked, and now I can scale to how big I want my circle to be. So I want it to be just around a little bit here. And now it made this you can see the discoloration uh when this turns uh, a bit yellow it means it's a fully closed thing it's fully enveloped so let's say i was making a line like this like this and i would place just like this and i hit escape now it's not blue because it's not closed but if i would connect these two boom now it becomes yellow so that's the indicator that it's fully closed and you can continue with the design but for now, I'm going to delete. Boom. All right. So we got this circle right here. So we can select it by just left clicking on it. And I want to extrude it. So I hit E, the E for extrude. And we really can't see anything what changed except for this panel that came with it. So hold shift. And then with the middle mouse, we can change this viewing right here. And now we can see that this arrow has formed. Yeah, we'll hit this button right here, the right, so we have a really side view. Now, I can go up and up and up and up, and now I can see that I actually scaled my pictures wrong. 
because right now I made the circle for the top one. You can see there's there's nothing sticking out. But here on the right, I can see that this is just sticking out too much. So I have to scale down this little bit. So you go to canvases, the side one, and I have to cancel this sketch actually because it doesn't allow me to otherwise. Go to the side and edit the canvas. Now you get this interface right here and it shows you, you can just move it from left to right, but you can also scale it down. So let's scale that down a bit and I have to move it just a little bit. I thought I'd do this to save time, but I did it wrong, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's see how good we are now. Ah, it needs a little bit more. My apologies for that. All right, chip chip, and I have to go up a bit. That's fine for now. Let's go back to that sketch. See, now, now it's nice. See, now we've got, this line is flush to this, pretty flush to this one. And when I go back to the top view, it's still fine. So we will go to the side view. Now I want this to reach all the way up here to the top one of this, because this slope we see here, we will do that with a chamfer. However, I can do this, but I want this bottom piece not to be all the way down here. So we go back to our extrude menu here, and we don't want it to be the direction of one side, we want it two sides. So once we hit two sides, we can see this arrow just joined us. So we can minimize it, and we will get that flush with that one. Now this, of course, looks nothing like it. Now we just made a, a thick circle, but bear with me. This is just a rough outline. Right here, there's an operation for a new body. I don't personally like to work all with bodies. I do everything in new components so I can separate each and every individual thing I have. And later on, you can mash up all those components into a new, uh, into a new body or a new component and then export that to a 3D printer file or an STL. So don't worry about having loads of files. That's just how I prefer to work. So I'll select new component here and I hit Okay, now it made this. Now I want it to be chamfered. I want that slope to be inside it. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, when you mouse over this, you can see the circle here, but also this one here. So I click this, I go to modify, and I want to chamfer it. You can see examples when you mouse over it. You can see that from a cube, when you chamfer the top, it goes, it goes into those slopes. So we click that and we can see this arrow right here. Now, if we keep pushing this down, it will make it until it can reach no further. And it's pretty much in a point C, we, we reach the end because it, it can't chamfer beyond this because otherwise it would go like inwards and you would get like a spiral up. So program won't allow you to do this, but you have to see how far you want to chamfer it in according to your file. And this one seems just about right. Yeah. So here's the chamfer type equal distance to distance and distance to angle. I usually, because I usually design this for weapons and, and, and like in, in this case, a grenade, it's always equal distance. So I hit OK and then he saved it and it's like this. Now we have something up top and it's nice and round and there's a chamfer in the inside there. However, we also have that for the bottom. So we do the same thing again, chamfer it and we go inside. This one is not so much as you can see. So we'll go, eh, we'll stick it to just one and we'll do that. Now we already have a way different shape than that simple looking thick circle we had. But as we can see, when you go to, to this side view here, it's kind of like Photoshop. It has everything categorized. And you can see we made this component and with a, a light bulb next to it. If I hit that light bulb, it will disappear. 
And this gives you the ability to look at your canvas and see if uh, you might have missed something, you might have want some more detail into it or what have you. Now, if you look up close here, we can see that there are these, uh, I don't know, holder thingies that will grip onto uh, the, the ball of the grenade. So we can start making those. And this is quite a unique shape. So we won't use circle, we won't use rectangle, but we'll go like um, a free roam with just lines. So let's see, I'll go here. Uh, I see that my origin is already by default uh, light bulb off. If I turn on these light bulbs, you see these three yellow uh, axes. And you'll always be drawing from one of these. You can flip these at an angle, but that will be in a later stream. Uh, this one is still just the basics. So this is like for the side, the other side, or the top and bottom. Right now, I want to do it from the side. So it's this one, and then hit L for line, or if you want to go the long way, sketch and then line. But shortcut is line, is the L. So hit L. And we already had this side selected and you can see it, it it makes this grid like snap in place if let's start that over i'll show you let's say because now i just pre-selected it let's say i have it like like this you can't make heads or tails of it and i won't select it i i'll hit l but it wants me to select one of these faces first so i hit it and then automatically it flips to that plane and now i can only draw from this direction like that now we can see let's see it's uh, sometimes you have to zoom in a little bit to get more precise so we'll start from here and it's just one click and then you can see it locks it in and you can see that line going so we'll do this now I want things to be symmetrical so what I'll do I'll only make half of this whole outline and then I'll mirror it and I'll show you because sometimes you'll have difficulty with certain geometry so I'll do it from here and then instead of going all the way to this plane I'll go to like this green line here because that's the half of it I'll go all the way to the bottom go to there go to just about here nope that's not right you can click that one then click and hold and you can kind of move it about and then hit L again. And then you can continue from that same point. See, now it turned that yellow again. I hit escape. So now I can like select this, but right on this side, we don't have anything. So what I'll do is go back to sketch and I'll go to mirror. And now it will pop up this window here and it says, what do I want to mirror? So I'll hit that one and I want to mirror this line, this line this line this one and that one but not this one because that's our mirror line that's well where we want to flip it over so we'll hit that option for mirror line and then select this one and then when i click it you can see it made an exact duplicate in a mirror then we hit okay we don't need this middle line anymore so we go to sketch i'm going to go to trim and now because i already selected it it already automatically trimmed it but I'm still in trim mode, so if I hit one of these, you can see it turn red. If I click one of these, it will be trimmed. I don't want that, of course, because right now I have a perfectly symmetrical clip thingy, holder thing, whatever you want to call it. So hit escape because we don't want to trim. Click that, and I'll just slide it a little bit to here, and then we hit E again for that extrude. I'll go two sides again. And right here is where I want my first component to come back because I need to see till what level I have to extrude it. So we'll go like whoop. It's actually set to cut now. And you have several options here. It's cut, join, intersect, new body or new component. I'll go into detail about that later. Right now it's set to cut and you can see if I would hit OK now, it will have created that shape as a cut i don't want it as a cut I, I want it as an actual part so i'll go here and what you can do is i'll just select um 
new component, or now it will make a, a, a separate component. I'll actually go for the join option and now it will create a single body of it. So right here, right now, it's like this and blip, now it's part of it. So I'll move this a little bit inside and have it well, just about like here. If I do it from the front view or side view, then you can see how far it's sticking out, how far it's going inside, but I'll hold it against like this slope because the ball is going to be inside here and it should, should barely just touch that holder thingy. So this one is fine for now. So we'll hit OK. Right now, uh, we don't have anything on, on the other side. I'll turn off the canvases just for a sec here. This clip is also on the other side. There is a mirror option for that also. And what you do is instead of the sketch mirror option, you go to the create mirror option. So it's create mirror. And now it wants me to select all the faces that I want to copy. So we already have one selected and this one and that one and that one and that one. Move over to the other side, that one, that one, that one. Don't forget about the bottom and let's not forget this backside right here. Now we have it all selected and you can see objects, 10 selected. And then there's a mirror plane again. So hit that one and we want to mirror it on this one right here because we want it on the other side. So we'll hit that. You can see like this shade outline forming and hit OK. And now perfectly symmetrical. We just copied it on the other side. Simple, right? But this one, when we, let's see, now it became part of the component. If I turn on the canvases again, uh, let's turn off the component. You can see a little bit of a line going here and here and here. That means it's also a chamfer. There's also a chamfer going on here. So we'll do that also. But right now, it's all part of like rectangular pieces. So we'll, we have to shift and hold and click every line here that we want to chamfer. So I've selected these all, create, uh, I mean modify, bleh, chamfer. Let's zoom in here a little bit and, and go in a bit. It will stop once it, it's not possible anymore. See, because here it's at its end, so it won't go beyond that. But for now, this is, this is quite enough. And if, you're, if you find this piece here ugly, we can cut that away later. We hit OK. Now you'll see that this part is not copied. It only mirrors that once you have um, told it to mirror. It won't uh, mirror every change you make. Um, there's an option to do that is to lock it. I am not um, well enough with Fusion yet to, to do this stuff, but you can set the value if, uh, if you should, you, you could do the long way around just like I did it on the other side and just jam for that one. What you can do is you have here in the bottom, you have your history bar and you can see this chamfer is the last activity I had. So if I double click this, I'll go back into that editing and you can see here it's chamfered at 0.20. So I'll just hit OK and I'll go back and everything works in values here. So it's all easy to trace back. Hit that chamfer. I want to select all of these things and then just enter it with my numpad 0 0.20. Boom. And it's the same. And now it's also exactly symmetrical. You could just finish one and then mirror the whole thing. These are just different workflows and different techniques that, that you can do. Now we can mirror now this whole component and it would be pretty much done already i guess and it's just a really basic shape but that's boring so let's just continue i'll uh i'll mirror this component though so you can see so we'll go back to canvas and we'll go back to the side view and you can see this is just about the same so we'll go back to create mirror and instead of faces right here i want a whole component so you select, select components 
And now when I mouse over this one, you can see it light up. I click that. Again, that mirror plane. Now it's not this one, but it's this one because I want it there. So hit that bottom one and boom, you can see it already here in a shade. You hit OK and now that whole thing is mirrored. It's that simple. Now, if you want to create a ball, uh, you can print the ball, of course, but what I'm going to do is not print the ball because I want to put some electronics in there. So I'm going to go to the hobby shop and just get one of those uh, divider plastic ball thingies. Uh, one, they're cheap, they're smooth, they're clear, and it's just easier to buy one of those instead of just printing it. And cheaper. Don't forget, but cheaper. But what we have here now, I'll remove that canvas again is we can see back in the canvas, a part of the ball goes inside of these, these main bodies. But if I go here, this is just a solid, like a flat surface. So, you know, it, we don't have any space to like mush it on. It will just roll off. So what I'll do is create a ball and use that cut option so I can like cut out an exact square and then when I get the plastic ball it will fit on there I'll show you how to do that and I'll have to go to the form because I don't want to make a flat surface I want to make a 3d surface so you go to form and then create and here you see a sphere a t-spline sphere so where do you want it and I want to hit that right here in the middle there we go. Now we have a ball. Yeah, it uh, totally misplaced it, but you know, that's, that's fine. That's fine. We'll just hit OK, and I just roughly estimated this, but you can double click the whole thing and press M for move, and then you can like freely move this around. Now, it won't do it exactly in the middle, but with a little bit of tinkering and everything, we can get it pretty much in the middle. Seems to be fine from these sides, seems to be fine. This distance seems to be equal. Not from that side, though. So, you know. Ooh. And we'll go like here. Let's see from here and here. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. See from a distance. Yeah, it seems all right. You hit OK. And we will finish this form and hit it like that. And now we have made a ball. However, this ball is still round. And this flat surface, if I like remove this body right here you can see that it's it's still flat it's just it's just clipping in there and you'll see this with a lot of game models if you extract them it's all clipped in there because for in a game it's fine but not for printing we want to you know you have easy assembly and not waste all the things and we want everything to line up perfectly so what we'll do is put that body back and I'll see if I have to make that ball a little bit smaller let's hit that canvas yes yeah, see you can see this outline here you see it here. It's not also fully in the middle. Well, according to my design, this, but not in the reference image, but that's still fine. It could be a little bit smaller, but I think I'm just going to leave it here for the sake of this video. Now, we want to remove parts of um, on, on this. We, we, we want that circle to be nice up in there. Uh, that can be done, but first we have to hit that and we have to copy this body into a new one. So hit that, copy and paste and hit OK. Now we have two. See, if I make this one invisible, the body one is still there. We have to actually do this one more time because we have to cut twice and then still have the original shape. It, it, it dissolves that shape in which you want to copy it. So if you want to cut it twice like me now I have to make three shapes because cut twice and one is the body will still see so hit that again copy paste hit OK now we got three so we will select this body 
you have to go to the combine section to dissolve these things. So the target body is this one. And the tool body is this one. I don't want to join it. I want to cut it. Now you can see it becomes red. And if I go into here, I might have to do it the other way around. If I hit OK now and I dissolve these two. Nope, I did it right. You can see that. Now it used one body with that other component. You could see it become red and remove the whole thing of that shape. And now let's say I do print this ball. It will fit exactly in this hollowed out piece. However, you can see now is only body one and body two. I just had body three and that one got dissolved right now on this side. I don't have any. There's still this flat surface. That's why I needed that second body. So again, go to modify and go to combine. I could just mirror the whole thing, but you know, target body is this one and then tool body. I can't select it because I made it invisible. Make one visible again, tool body. That one, you can see it become red and you can see this outline here already, see? And then you hit OK. And now we have a grenade with some perfectly hollowed out uh, sphere type thingies. And then if we do decide to print out the ball, it will fit exactly in that bottom and that top half. And now that's not so bad for uh, we haven't been uh, <laughs> streaming so long. And we already have something right here. Now, this is, of course, a, a really basic shape. Um, looks quite boring, actually. Um, you know, you, you don't want it to be all this flat surfaces. You want some, some depth in your work, of course. So um, what you can do is make some simple details to it. Now, what would be a nice detail? Maybe there is some detail in this canvas. So we will just uh, make everything invisible and we'll go back to the canvas and we'll see you know you can uh, grab some reference image on the internet let's see oh well right here you know there is some sort of triangle weird looking thing this is just artwork of course let's see what else we got this is a different 3d printed no nah. this guy or girl Whoever designed this, they made this as a little bit of a uh, of an indentation or like a cut in it, which is a cool idea. You know, it gives a little bit more design. See, this one is like flat here with a thing on top. Let's do that. You know, we'll make we'll make this one here, this little hole thingy, and we'll make something up top just to give it that little bit more detail, a little bit more depth. So let's do that. So, all right. Just to show you some other techniques and, uh, you know, see what else you can make with uh, perhaps otherwise a boring design. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Now, I don't want to change the height on this. I don't. Um, so what I'll do is in this history bar, you have this ruler here and you can hold and click it. And you can go back all the steps. And if I drag it to here, see, now it shows me only these five steps that I did. And this is the extruding bit. What I can do is double click this and I can change it to be a little bit lower. I hit OK. And if I go back to like present day, it will have made it lower. You see that extrude is now the shape is like way different. So you can see that. And if I pull back the canvas, you can also see it because it's now way lower. But that does mean I have to adapt that chamfer also. So here was that extrude and here was that chamfer. So we'll have to edit that chamfer also to simulate that. So we'll hit that up till there, hit OK, and it will calculate and do all its thing. And now it made it just like this. Yeah. I'm going to make something up top here and we'll move to the top. And instead of just laying something 
on top of it because in my mind it's boring and whenever I make cosplays I want some artistic freedom so I usually spin some own designs to it um, so we want to hit that one I want to draw on that one and hit that circle again hit it up in the middle and you can see this outline right here so I'll just use that one for reference hit escape now I want to select that inside one but it won't let me because this exist, uh, existing shape is on top of it. So I'll just uh, make that component invisible. I'll make the mirror invisible. And now I can select it. Hit E again. And now we can see it's uh, kind of um, on the middle again. Now I can do this two side thing again and just go lu, 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 and go all the way up top i want this as a new component and make this component again and just line it up like straight and 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 do that but that's kind of a workaround you can actually make other planes and other faces and i'll show you it's just to make your life a little bit more easier you hit that component back into into the visuals and I'll stop the sketch and you'll hit this one just that face and you go to construct and then offset plane see now it made that yellow thing right up top there you hit OK and now it made a new plane there you can click that to draw on it then hit C for circle and now I'm drawing straight up top on that one as you can see now I can click it hit extrude and I'm like right on top of it. It cannot get more flush than this one. Now I can, um, I can do this and just chamfer that again. But what I want to do is select cut and just make a teeny tiny indentation here and go okay. Now I made like a, a, a small indentation I want to go back no wait I'm saying it wrong I'll click this one now do the same again offset plane hit OK hit circle again click that one again from the middle apparently it's not really in the middle so it really doesn't really want me to have it in the middle hmm see that but Screw it, I'll just click it like this and move it a bit once I made it. So I made another circle in there and I'm gonna extrude this and now I'm gonna move this up top. But now I wanna have that canvas back because I need to see how far I need to go. How far I need to go. Uh, that's the wrong side. Is it? No, it's not. Why are my canvases barely visible? I don't know, but it's about till yay high. So I'll hit OK. And now it looks completely weird. But we'll fix that with another chamfer. We're going to modify and chamfer and li 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 li. Now this looks already a lot better. We can go even further up till here so that these lines are pretty flush like this see now it looks already with a lot more depth so we'll hit this and just so that it looks a little bit nicer we'll hit this circle right here and instead of chamfer we'll go to fill it and then we will just make that one a little bit more round and now I don't know if you can see it, but if we zoom in close, I've rounded out that that little thingy right here. And I can do the same for the top. Modify, fill it, and you can go all the way flat if you so choose. Now you have like a round grenade. I really don't... Do I like this? Hmm. Nah. The ball is already pretty round, so let's keep this... Uh, Let's keep it like this. A little bit round, but still kind of kind of cone-shaped. So I hit OK and do that. 
you can grab the canvas and see how how good you are at it and the original design is a little bit more but it's like a whole like a like an entire thing and we just saw that like it's kind of boring this way you get a little bit more dimension to it so turn off the canvas and we can you know let's make a let's make this figure also in here but have like an indentation and I can show you how to do a pattern and and that will be it then you know I have some basic shapes so what you do we want to draw on this one so this is pretty much in a 45 degree angle so we need to have one of these planes in a 45 degree angle we'll go to construct and then plane at angle and now it wants to select a line so we'll go to this line and you can see it made this huge thing with this sidebar ruler thingy we'll hit up top we'll hit right you can see this line here and now i want to get this line in that degree so you can see the hand when i mouse over here and go like dick -a -dick -a -dick -a -dick -a -dick -a dick -a dick and you can actually set it to like this degree here 45 degree and now i can hit okay i'll go back i'll hit that and i'll hit l to free roam some lines now let's see i got this right here is the middle so i'll hit my middle line first up till like here and then let's see i'll go like this and this and this mm, 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 mm. like that and that yeah agreed cool hit escape now i want to mirror that again just like we did in the beginning so we'll go to sketch and then mirror i want to hit that one that one that one that one and that one and then the mirror line is this one hit okay that middle one we don't need anymore so back to sketch and trim that away hit escape and now we have made that little logo i will just remove those hit that hit e for extrude and you can see it's at an angle now so we'll go to two sides Whop. and like that we'll go back and hit that up and we will see right now you can see these two arrows but you can't see the shape or form i'll set it to cut and now i want to cut this just in here see that maybe just the minimal amount that's a little bit too low. like that that's fine maybe even one more let's do one more hit okay and now it cut that in now you can choose to chamfer this also or fill it so let's see how that would look like this and like this and like this and like this and like that and we can just yep now it looks like this should we keep it like this it won't get any further let's see how it would look with a um, with a fillet around it you know round it out maybe that looks a little bit nicer because i didn't really like the way it looked that looks better a little bit more round now we made it here now but let's say i want this exact one also like here and here and here just you know on on each side i, I want one you can do that and you don't have to draw them all out and you don't have to mirror it you can do pattern it can follow a a line so what you do is create and i want a pattern is create pattern and we want this to go in a circle so it's a circular pattern it already has objects so i'm selecting all of these oh, oh, oh eh, not that one not that one no 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 So you go to create pattern, circular pattern, and you just select 
all of the things that we want to pattern in that circle. So not to forget this face and also that one and all of them on the inside. Like that. So select the axis is this thing because we want it to be uh, patterned on here. Uh, the type is full because we want it to be patterned all the way around. Now you can see the original and the two ones here, but we don't want in a total of three, but we want a total of four. So you hit that, you can see our original here, you can see a copy here, here and here, completely symmetrical. You hit OK, and now it made these four fully identical on each of that side. Pretty neat, right? Now we can do that also for here with an offset. So we'll go to the right. We will hit this and hit O for offset. And if we hover over here, we can see this circle. We click it and we can see this identical circle being made around it. And we can click this and hold it and we can shove that all the way to this tiny but it will keep it pretty flush to that so we'll like keep it like right here and we'll hit okay now it made a line inside and what we can do is we hit e for extrude and we can cut inside of it just a teeny tiny bit you hit okay and now i have this little extra detail shape you can chamfer this of course so we'll go to here chamfer and we want it like la, 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 and I chamfer this i hit the wrong line here let's not do that there we go and then just a little chamfer there see that and now just with a few simple steps we made this thing already look way different let's say you want uh we told you in the beginning that we want to just want to have this a little bit more in a slope because this looks kind of blocky doesn't it you know so we can just select a few and chamfer that in see you can go all the way in and now it looks like this now that's better than just a whole friggin' block. Heck, you can even um, uh, make uh, the resemblance of uh, of rivets, like a like a really big rivet inside this one. And that will be the last one we do, shall we? All right, let's make a rivet. Let's make a rivet, rivet, rivet. Yeah. We select that circle, yeah, and we hit E for extrude again. And we will let it cut inside and we'll go like yoink, just a little bit inside. See that? Now it's inside. We'll go to top and we'll want to make, make another circle inside of it. So hit circle, hit that one. And I want to have it like dead in the center. Of course, now it is dead in the center. <laughs> we don't want to make it this big. We want to just go a little bit inwards. Hit escape. Hit that one. And then this one will be just sticking a little bit out like this. Let's do one more like this. And we'll make this a new component. We hit OK. See, now it's just something that's sticking out just like we did this one. But what we'll do is hit that circle. We'll go to modify. We'll go to chamfer. And we'll make this pretty. Oh, wait. Ooh, 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 ooh. My bad. Not chamfer. We'll go to modify and fill it. And then we will make this pretty round like, like, a, like a rivet. And it will make this circle inside. And as soon as we hit OK, we hit this one again, hit extrude, hit this one to cut and make that hole that's part of a rivet. And now you can see, now it's something that's sticking out with another hole in it. 
And now this is far more detailed than what we started out with. Now, if I want to copy this whole thing, because let's not forget, we still have that mirrored face here that looks just boring as hell. So we'll hit this one, we'll delete it. But now this one, this whole thing looks different. And it's comprised of several components, which we want to merge into one. So we'll go to here to unsaved and go right click and then new component. And it will make a new empty component. And what we can do is grab this one and you can see the outline of what is selected then click and drag it inside of here. And then you will see what is visible inside this component and then hit that other one, that rivet we just made and click and drag it into here. See, now we made it into a new component, but it's still separated, but it's merged into one and that makes it easier for us to mirror. So go back to unsaved and you can see this this empty circle and we want to activate the main body so we hit activate component now we're back in our main mirror main window and now if i hit this one it will select the whole thing again this way you can work in all separate components then make a new component and what goes together you can merge into uh into groups so to say but we want to mirror this one so we have this one selected create mirror it's already selected it's set to components so if if it was not then it would now only select faces but we want the whole component so we select component that one and then mirror the plane on this bottom one hit ok and there we go now it is an a exact duplicate of this and we still have our magic ball here that fits right in there so this is a pretty base this is pretty basic stuff you can see right now that our ball is nowhere near these clips that's easily changeable because we can go back in our history bar and we can see that shape we made the ball so we'll go back to there and we'll go back to the ball you double click it and then you go double click the ball and then you edit the form and you can like whoop, see we can still change the shape now I'd, i want this barely barely touching because i don't want to delete anything else and you can do this with the ruler but you can also do this manually and where you just make it smaller and smaller so seems 30 is just about right yeah we hit okay it should have done it on all sides and it seems to be perfect finish form and now the ball is kind of bigger it is just touching that you can see it see it's just in there and now we have some fancy pants grenades going on here let me turn off that grid line and now we got this going on here so as you can see this grenade was made really fast really simple and it's and it's all from just two images uh, in my case it's a it's a side and a front but it was just to provide the rough outline and then it comes to your own imagination and just go from there. Uh, for instance, now for me, this ball looks kind of too big in my opinion. So I'll just go back and, and edit the form again and make it a little bit smaller because I, I just don't like it that big. And that's, that's just personal taste. It's up to you, you know. In my mind, this doesn't have to be touching. So why should it? no reason and let's say you find this done you want to print it like this that's fine let's assume you're going to do the same thing as me you don't want the ball because you're going to the hobby store you get one of those plastic separator ball thingies you just go hide that one and you hide the mirror one 
because the top and bottom in this case are the same. So it's just this one we want as a file, as a print file. So we right click this and we go here, save as STL. The structure will be one file. You can go one file per body and then it will separate if you have uh, selected that, but I only want this as high file. The refinement is high and then you hit OK. It will ask you where to save. So it's already in my Wayne's Workshop slash Anna. So we'll go uh, grenade for an STL and we hit save and we got that. Uh, now it's saved as an STL. And now you can just start up your slicer, whether it be Cura or uh, Simplify 3D or whatever slicing software, software you have. So we got that right here right now. And then we can open the file and there we can see the grenade STL. And we can load that in and it will have placed it in there. Now we can see it is super tiny. It's, it's like so tiny because we didn't set the scale yet. You can set this scale, of course, in your slicing software um, and then just print it away. Or you can do that inside the program. And we will just make everything visible again. We'll go to modify. We'll go to scale. And what entities do we want to scale? So we'll just we want everything to scale. Now we'll load because I have to has to calculate and by how much of a factor we want to scale it. I'll turn on these grid lines again so you can actually see a difference. So now it's scale one. It was like really tiny. So let's scale it by a factor of seven. And now it's scaled it by a factor of seven. Now it's already way bigger. Now, if you want to measure uh, how tall this item now is, you can do that by going to inspect and then measure. And you can see this, this, this dot appearing here. And the second one will go there. And now it will say here on the side right here, it's now 8.6 centimeters. So... This is how you measure, and let's say you want it by to 10 centimeters, then you scale it up some more, and you measure, and until your um, product is scaled to your liking, and then you can do the whole saving to STL thing again. And already, we made a nice-looking grenade uh, with some nice details. We covered some basic steps, and... And that's it. It's, it's, it's that simple. Um, it's really easy to use. It's free for hobbyists. So unless you have a company that makes a hundred grand a year, then you have to pay. But since we're all cosplayers and prop builders and we're not super rich, so it's, it's free to use. And, you know, let start out small. You can like build this exact duplicate of a grenade just to get the feel going for it before you start your own project. But as you can see, it's a really simple to use program and it's, uh, there's no reason not to try it. So that was it for this stream. I thank you for joining me and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.